everyone. Welcome back. Um, I don't know whether you saw my update video. If you haven't, check that out because a lot's changed on the channel. Uh, we're back, finally. I know a lot of you have been requesting episode 6. Um, I've been pretty busy with life things, university, etc. But anyway, I'm back. This is episode 6 of PHP 101. And today, we're going to look at sessions and cookies. Okay. So, I've made a little folder called episode 6 on my little local installation server thing um, so we're gonna make a new file firstly I'm going to show you uh, cookies just gonna create a file for this I don't know if you've seen this editor this is PHP storm it's quite a good editor um, huh. yeah oh we're there okay my uh, Mac's been a little bit slow at the moment but just bear with me uh, Okay, God, it's been awfully slow, isn't it? Okay, so here's our PHP document, as you know it very well now, if you've seen the other episodes. I'm going to show you what a cookie is. Basically, a cookie is a piece of digitized information in a browser that allows us web developers to store information in the browser and have it expire at a time and date, which is quite useful. Um, just a side note, I'll put this as a comment. Do, do not use cookies for logins. We're going to use sessions for that. Um, never use a cookie for a login um, because a cookie is stored on a local machine and a cookie can be edited by a malicious hacker. So somebody can change your cookie to pretend they're an admin, basically, and ransack everything. So uh, cookies should never be used for logins um, or any sort of data to do with the user. Um, they should be used for something like little preferences. So I want to show you how to do how to use a cookie and etc. So how do we create a cookie? It's easy as set cookie. Once my PHP storm starts to work, set cookie, and you can see here PHP storms telling you what you require. You require a, a name which should be a string. I don't, if you saw my types episode, you'll know what a string is. A value, which, if you see these little square brackets, it means it's an optional parameter, which, if you see an equals, it means it defaults to null anyway. So we need a name, a value, and when it expires. And there is a load of other stuff, which you can set the path, domain, whether it's secure or not, etc., etc. We're just going to skip over those. We can do the simple thing. So if we double-click this now, it's going to ask me for a name. Which I'm going to call this uh, oh god my uh, editor's being a bit slow chocolate chip just a pun on the cookie thing yeah I'm not very funny um, and we're going to set a value <coughs> which I'm going to say yum <laughs> Okay, so now we've set a cookie, uh, we haven't given it an expired time, just thinking that, um, which will be null, if not, which means it will never expire. So if you leave the last parameter off, the cookie will never expire, it will stay in the browser until somebody manually clears it. Um, obviously, you've seen the thing where you can clear all your browser data, but you can also clear your cookies, this thing will get cleared, etc. Um... So we can set expires time, which I believe the expire time is a, I think it's in seconds, if I remember rightly. I'm not too sure, but it's something like that. It's like 1-800 or 3 600. Um, which I think, actually no, it's in minutes, I think. Yeah, that's that's minutes, I think. So this this is basically how you set a cookie. So now we have a cookie called chocolate chip. And the value is yum. So think of this as a variable that's in the browser that we can then access. So how do we access said variable? Well, all we have to do in PHP is do dollar underscore, and you'll see it already pop up here, dollar underscore cookie, and then you reference it by the key. We called it chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. And we can then cast this to a variable my cookie which means that now my cookie is going to be equal to yum 
get me at some me uh, quotes mixed up there. So basically, we're going to pull this from Donut and Skull Cookie Chocolate Chip. Oops, I've really, really mangled that here. I'm just getting used to this editor. It's a bit uh, strange. Okay, so basically this is going to equal to this right here because it's our value. Um, if the cookie exists now, the cookie may not exist. Which, if it doesn't, this will throw what's known as a PHP notice. Now, a notice is something you want to try and avoid. It's sort of like an error. But it's an error that the PHP software can continue with. So a notice, it will, sometimes it actually shows it on screen as an error. So we don't want that. We don't want the user to see this as an error. So we're going to do a simple check which will stop it generating a notice. So we can do if is set, that is, that's actually two words there, is and set. I don't know why they do that. It should really be that, but you know. So if our cookie is set in the, is been set, in the browser, so if it exists, as it were, this is the proper way to check. If it's set, then we can access it. If not, we do some sort of default value, which would be not yum. Okay, so this basically checks whether the cookie exists. Um, if it does exist, we're going to get the value of that and put it into my cookie. If it doesn't exist, we're going to put not yum instead, which is a default value. So then dollar my cookie is either worth yum or not yum, depending on whether the cookie exists. Okay. Now, your next question is going to be, how do we remove a cookie? Well, it's actually really easy. Because what you can do in PHP is you can override a cookie. So you can do a set cookie with the same name and we can set it to null this will basically make that cookie not have value but it does not fully remove the cookie because as you see here you're making a cookie that never expires with the key of chocolate chip but with no value that doesn't remove the cookie does it so how do we actually remove it? We do set cookie, give it the name, chocolate chip, set it to null, and then we set the expire value to zero. This means that as soon as this line of code here is called, it will create a cookie called chocolate chip with, the, with no value, but then it will immediately expire. And when a cookie expires, it removes itself from the browser. I believe. I'm not entirely sure about that. Don't quote me on that one. Um, okay, so we can't really run this in the browser because I don't have any sort of cookie viewer, otherwise I would show you. Um, but that'll basically make the cookie immediately expire. And that's cookies. So let me show you um, sessions yeah. right here. So we do new file sessions. Now sessions are a little bit different. Sessions are, I like cookies, but they are actually set on the at a server level. They're not actually set on the browser, they're set for, on the actual server. So if somebody clears their cookies, they're still going to have the session. This is useful for uh, logging people in for a certain amount of time. Okay, so first thing we have to do in sessions, because PHP is a little bit weird, on the first line, you have to add session underscore start. If you're going to use a session or reference one in your script, you have to have this line here, otherwise you're going to get errors. That's be why it's something to do with internal PHP that it needs this to know that it's dealing with sessions or some rubbish like that. So I always try and put this on the same line as the PHP open tag here. Okay, so if we have a look for stuff to do with sessions, this is all the methods in PHP. Session destroy we're going to touch on in a minute. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, you can set cookie params. There's your set to start that we've just added above, and you can unset. <coughs> and there's a tag for dollar underscore session, which we're going to use. Okay. So how do we create a session? It's as easy as doing dollar underscore session, the key of it. So my awesome session, and setting it to something. 
very similar to a variable actually. It's awesome. <coughs> so that's basically a set session. How do you retrieve a session? You just do dollar value is equal to dollars got session. No awesome session. And that's how you retrieve that. Very simple, right? You just use these very two tags and it's done. PHP handles the rest. But then how do you properly destroy a session? Now you could do dollars go session and the key of it is equal to null, but that's not 100% working. You'd think it would, but it doesn't actually clear that. This key still exists in PHP. Although you've set it to null, it's not really clear. The best way to do it is to do session underscore destroy. This actually doesn't clear a single session though. This clears all sessions. So I would still use this one um, and just check if it's null, then we know it's not set in my script. I'd do if null, if this is null, then do this. If it's not null, then do this. Um, and you can also do the is set thing. I, th I think that might work actually if you did the is set. That might actually work if you do this. I'm not entirely sure. You might have to experiment with that one. Um, but this this line here is what completely clears the sessions. So if you're doing a logout, for example, this is going a bit more higher level now. I'm going to create a little logout function. We're going to do functions in the next episode. And I'll show you how they work. So if you were to log someone out, you just do a session as would destroy and you would return true. Okay, we're going to touch on functions in the next episode. That is a little bit extra. But that's basically sessions. Okay, and that's the end of the episode. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this episode, please give it a like because I don't know if these things are actually going to be any good, if anybody watches them. So let me know. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions about this uh, and I will answer them. So make sure you do that. You notice here PHP Storm is flagging this as a redundant closing tag. In PHP now, you don't actually have to include that anymore. Unless you've got some HTML underneath. So if you've got HTML underneath. Oh, it still says redundant, actually. That's interesting. That shouldn't be redundant. Oh, it's gone. There you go. Yeah, so if you've got nothing, you've got no HTML in here, you can actually omit that completely. But that's uh, another topic. Um, so yeah, leave a like. Um, subscribe. Some more videos we're going to do these a week um so yeah hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you very much for watching see you in the next one